Welcome to a tutorial on the 8085 interrupts. Okay, and uh, in this video we're going to uh, discuss about the RST based interrupts. Okay, so uh, this pin diagram that you see uh, on the right, okay, so this just includes all the 40 pins of the 8085 microprocessor. Okay, and out of these, uh, this square bracket actually indicates the uh, entire set of interrupt pins that are present on uh, the 8085 microprocessor. So these are basically the interrupt pins that the 8085 basically has. Okay, so starting from pin number 6 that is TRAP, RST 7.5, 6.5 and 5.5 and finally INTR. So these pins were starting from 6, okay, that's uh, starting from pin number 6 that is from TRAP onwards as we just go uh, towards pin number 10 that is INTR the priorities okay based on each of these uh, uh, pins okay they just go on decreasing so this means that the pin trap that's pin number 6 of course it has the highest priority okay out of all the interrupt pins that are available and uh, then it just goes on decreasing RST 7.5 has a comparatively lower priority and then RST 6.5 and 5.5 and finally INTR uh, that's the least priority interrupt pin that the 8085 has so in this uh, video uh, we are gonna actually discuss the interrupt process of uh, the I mean you know how the A085 is interrupted and all so using uh, the INTR and the INTA bar pin that's pin number 11 okay so uh, this INTR pin that you can see over here well this has the least priority uh, as I just told you okay and now uh, this pin is basically an input pin okay so as you can see so this is basically an input pin and uh, it is used to accept any kind of well uh, interrupt request from any externally connected uh, hardware circuit like for example you know if you just connect any uh, kind of sensor device okay for sensing something and immediately if that device sends it and sends a logic one input at the INTR pin that's pin number 10 then uh, the 8085's current uh, work or the current set up tasks that it's uh, been performing okay it could be interrupted okay so this uh, in INTR pin as you can see is also an active low pin I'm sorry an active high pin which means that uh, whenever you put a logic one voltage level on it okay then it, it would just be activated otherwise it's just deactivated okay so if you need to send an interrupt uh, request then uh, you can use or uh, as the designer, I mean whoever is designing the uh, microprocessor circuit, I mean 8085 circuit, can basically use the INTR pin to accept any kind of interrupt from external circuitry. Okay, so whenever this pin is sent with a logic 1 voltage level, an interrupt request is accepted by the 8085. Okay, and uh, its current operation is interrupted. Right? And uh, this function is also uh, similar to a kind of, I mean, uh, any any type of, you know, call instruction that uh, you're uh, using uh, calling subroutines to, uh, like for example, in uh, counter-based applications where you need to, uh, you know, call delay subroutines to generate uh, finite delay for some time interval. So, like that, when you are just, uh, you know, calling subroutines using the call uh, instruction, the INTR pin upon receiving a logic 1 input, that's an interrupt request, it just takes it that way uh, as an interrupt request, and uh, whenever that happens, the 8085 basically calls uh, an emergency subroutine which is just I mean which is just you know referred to uh, more specifically as a service routine so a service routine is a subroutine program that is used in order to perform the necessary tasks whenever the 8085 receives an interrupt request okay so the subroutine for an interrupt request that's called a service routine okay so it just calls a service routine at a you know that is placed at some sort of memory location I mean different memory location altogether and uh, well it just performs the necessary task along the way and uh, 
whenever we are working with the INTR pin, the INTA bar pin, well, it just also comes in. So this INTA bar pin, on the other hand, is basically an output pin. Okay, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, you know symbol over here. I you can easily understand that it's an active low pin. Okay, so this means that the INTA bar pin is used to basically send a logic zero output whenever it would receive any kind of interrupt request on the INTR pin. So if you have a logic one interrupt I mean any uh, logic one voltage level falling on INTR that's pin number 10 okay immediately the INTA bar that's pin number 11 sends out a logic zero voltage level to the uh, hardware I mean to the external circuitry from which the interrupt request is actually received at pin number 10 okay so this logic zero volt I mean signal that's just sent out from INTA bar that's pin number 11 is known as an interrupt acknowledge signal okay so now these are the two pins that are used to well interrupt the 8085. Now the process of actually interrupting the 8085 uh, using these two pins is well um, you know based on certain types of interrupts which we call well RST interrupts and these are uh, actually uh, certain interrupt instructions okay so if I might elaborate on them over here so uh, let me just tell you the RST actually will refers to or, or is actually an abbreviation for a restart okay so RST means restart so these are basically interrupt instructions that will function as one byte call instructions okay so they also function as one byte call instructions meaning whenever you have any kind of I mean there are basically eight types of uh, RST instructions available so whenever any one type of RST code is placed on the 8085 microprocessors data bus okay there are specific codes for each of the eight types of RST instruction so whenever uh, for a particular RST instruction the its a uh, corresponding code is placed on the 8085 microprocessors data bus then you'd actually uh, what this instruction uh, would be doing is that it will actually initiate a call okay it will actually call the service routine program that is actually written elsewhere in the uh, external memory where uh, the actual program of the 8085 is present okay so how this happens I will describe that using a table okay there you go so this is the table that I was actually uh, talking about so here you can see uh, on the leftmost column that's the mnemonics uh, you can see that there are eight different types of RST instructions, okay? Starting from RST0 through to RST7. And uh, for each of these RST instructions, there is a specific type of binary code whose corresponding hex codes are uh, given alongside. And whenever, as I was saying, that whenever uh, a particular RST instruction would be appearing or uh, would actually be... Uh, there to send the or, or to interrupt the 8085 microprocessor then for that corresponding RST instruction uh, placed on the 8085's data bus okay like its hex code that is the uh, control of the program okay uh, presently uh, the 8085 is actually executing the control of the program would actually be transferred to a predefined memory location okay so it will actually be transferred to a predefined memory location. Let me just give you an example. Let's say uh, the 8085 is well actually executing some sort of program, any any kind of program, okay? And suddenly there is an interrupt request on the INTR uh, pin, okay? There is a logic one signal on the INTR pin from an external hardware, and uh, for that the 8085 would just send out an INTA bar an interrupt acknowledge signal and as soon as the hardware receives the interrupt acknowledge signal from the 8085 the external circuit knows that the 8085 is actually requesting for the corresponding RST instructions uh, hex code so what it does is that the external circuit actually supplies the corresponding hex code. Let's just take the example of RST3. So let's say for RST3 the corresponding hex code uh, being 0FH over here. 
well I'm sorry it's not zero it's basically D okay yeah that's better so it's uh, for RSV3 actually uh, the hex code being DFH okay so whenever the 8085 would receive this hex code for RST3 uh, on its data bus then it will know that it should it must actually transfer its program control to this memory location that is 0018 okay so that's why I was saying that the INTR pin will actually behaves as a call I mean its operation was similar to a call instruction so whenever the RST instruction would actually uh, be uh, provided uh, for interrupting the 8085 the entire operation would just become similar to a call operation where the service routine stored in the uh, corresponding location for RST3 that is as an example that is 0018 would be just called into the picture and uh, the instruction I mean and the uh, program that the 8085 was actually executing okay and it was well supposed to execute some instruction after that when it just received the interrupt so the uh, corresponding memory location of the instruction immediately next to the RST interrupt that it received would just be stored on the stack so in order to do that you should always uh, declare a stack okay you should always declare a uh, stack for uh, an 8085 interrupt uh, program and hardware design you should always declare a stack okay so as I was saying that the main contents I mean the contents of the main program would just be saved on the stack okay and uh, so would the memory location of the next inst I mean uh, the immediate next instruction after the RST interrupt okay would just also be stored on the stack and uh, the program control would just be transferred to this location a 0018 where the corresponding service routine is present and after the service routine gets executed okay in the service routine there would be a return command placed and upon encountering the return command and executing the service routine the program would again return to where it just left from to the main body of course okay and then it will just start to execute its uh, same routine work as the main program was performing uh, prior to receiving the interrupt request okay so here I'm just gonna illustrate a circuitry uh, a hardware circuitry uh, that is basically used in order to provide uh, these interrupt I mean uh, the RST interrupts to the A085 okay okay so here we are with the hardware concern so as you can see we're using a tri-state buffer chip and um, a resistor okay uh, and we're basically using this hardware to create the RST three interrupts corresponding hex code okay that should be supplied to the 8085 to transfer the program control to 0018 me memory call location okay so you see I'll, I'll tell you something uh, before we move on to the hardware that well uh, for the INTR pins whenever we are supposed to use the INTR pins for the interrupts we know that we are using the RST interrupt uh, instructions so for the RST interrupt instruction uh, the call location to which the program uh, should I mean the program control should be transferred is actually well determined by constructing some specific hardware circuit okay it needs to have a specific hardware configured to actually direct the program control to the corresponding memory call location so this is why uh, the RST uh, interrupt instruction or rather the INTR pin is actually were referred to as a non vectored interrupt pin okay this is just referred to as a non vectored interrupt pin because the hardware circuit that we design would actually determine where the uh, program control would transfer and it is not uh, pre-designed or uh, its circuitry is not present or embedded within the 8085 so whenever you just send an interrupt request on the INTR pin then automatically the program control doesn't get transferred to a specific memory location you need to design a suitable hardware to do that okay so that's why I just called a, a non-vectored interrupt pin 
okay and uh, this hardware that you're supposed to uh, design should be done externally so this hardware should be constructed externally okay that is out of the 8085 microprocessor body okay so now returning to our circuit diagram once again so we see that we are using a tri-state buffer chip and uh, we can see that in order to execute the RST3 interrupt request uh, we need a hex code of DFH okay to be supplied to the 8085 microprocessor so on the tri-state buffer uh, chips input pins that's the uh, set of I mean set of eight pins on the left you can see that that's uh, starting from di7 through to di0 we can see that uh, we have the corresponding binary code so the input hex code okay so the input hex code is actually D let's just check it okay DFH DFH so this is actually the code for uh, enabling the RST3 request okay and now we can also see uh, that since the tri-state buffer hasn't been enabled yet okay meaning that in the on the enable pin it it would require a logic zero voltage level but since uh, it's not been supplied yet th so the buffer chip is disabled and uh, now we need to enable it whenever we actually need to transfer this code to the 8085 microprocessor okay so let's uh, bring the 8085 and connect it with the uh, chip concerned so that you have a picture of the entire hardware okay so there you go and here's the entire uh, hardware the in, in the complete format that you can see over here okay now in this uh, circuit as you can see that the uh, tri-state buffer isn't enabled yet and we are using this uh, switch S1 to actually interrupt the 8085 meaning uh, instead of any kind of sensor device we're just using uh, the switch to provide the interrupt request signal to the 8085 okay so the whole operation big you know uh, goes somewhat this way that whenever the switch S1 is pressed there so whenever it's just pressed okay the uh, voltage level at P okay would go to a logic one level okay so the voltage level at P okay it goes to logic one level meaning the five I mean the plus five volts uh, is actually dropping across this 10k resistor okay so let's just call this one as R1 and this one is R2 so actually the five volts is occurring or uh, falling across that of the R2 resistor okay which is also 10k in value so whenever that happens we can see that the logic one signal at P is also falling at the INTR pin of the A085 now once the INTR pin receives this logic one voltage level a logic zero voltage level correspondingly appears on the INTA bar pin which is an output pin as you know and it just sends this logic zero voltage level to the enable pin of the tri-state buffer device to which it is connected and the buffer at this moment becomes enabled as you can see here so by enabling the buffer what happens is that the entire 8-bit binary code uh, for uh, the DF H hex code for RST3 interrupt actually appears on the buffers output pins and correspondingly the output binary code from the uh, each of the output pins of the tri-state buffer uh, appears uh, on the lower order address data bus of the 8085 microprocessor as you can see over here so starting from 80 through to 87 so with this binary code received the 8085 understands that it, the binary code that it receives is actually DFH in terms of the hex code which actually corresponds to RST3 interrupt request and immediately what happens is that you need to write the program that way of course the program control is transferred to 0018H okay so whenever it receives a request of RST3 with respect I mean depending upon the binary code that the 8085 receives on its uh, data bus the lower order data bus the control of the program is automatically transferred to the call location 0018H so this just functions as a call instruction
So we see here that in order to enable a particular uh, interrupt request or an interrupt uh, uh, RST instruction, okay, the external hardware circuitry would be required to supply an 8-bit uh, binary or hex code, okay, on the data bus of the uh, 8085, that is the pins 80 0 through to 87 okay so an 8 bit binary or hex code would be just uh, sent in through the uh, lower order address data bus of the 8085 microprocessor so with this what happens is that the entire interrupt uh, process i mean the interrupting process of the 8085 is complete and at this moment the 8085 is interrupted and once interrupted the program control as mentioned earlier transfers to the location 0018H and at this location you should actually place the service routine so this should be uh, present at 0018H and immediately after executing the service routine there should be also an instruction of return present in the service routine so that the program control might return to the main program after the service routine is just over okay and uh, in order to enable uh, this interrupting process you should use uh, instruction known as EI that is enable interrupt so whenever you're writing the main program the, the enable interrupt uh, instruction should actually be present in the main program itself okay so that the interrupting process, I mean, uh, the uh, 8085 is just instructed to accept any kind of interrupt whenever and wherever during its program instruction, I mean, during its main program execution, it might occur. So, the, in a way, the 8085 is rendered sensitive to any interrupt request being accepted. Okay, so with this uh, hardware explained over here and given you the idea of how things, uh, I mean, you should actually uh, execute an interrupting process, we just wind up our discussion in this tutorial right over here. And we're going to explain how to write an interrupt program in the forthcoming tutorial. So till then, just a short goodbye for now, and thanks for watching.